Those of you who hadn't caught on, my name is Paul Hampton. I'm the Vice President of Certification for the Lore Alliance. And I've been in the radio business since uh, probably most of you were born. And uh, it started in the land mobile business. I started uh, with a telephone company in analog cellular, digital cellular, CDMA, and uh, I also spent eight years with Qualcomm. And then I have started to do some contracting and developing certification programs for the last, uh, oh, 15 years. Um, I've developed certification programs for uh, the Mopri Alliance, which is a printer alliance. I developed a certification program for the Ultra High Definition Alliance, which is the alliance that uh, uh, defines the requirements for your ultra high definition TV screens. And then uh, lately here with the, with the uh, um, Laura Alliance. So with that said, um, let me get started. So I need to do a quick, quick uh, hit for, the, for our certification program because it's related to what we're going to be talking about. So certification, if, if, uh, if you understand it, is important to make sure that the devices are going to be, that are going to be deployed are going to work correctly. They need to work well with all the other devices. They need to interop. They need to uh, uh, meet the requirements from a, uh, well, not regulatory, but from a uh, compliance standpoint. Lower WAN certified devices uh, are certified for conformance. And um, for some reason, this screen isn't working. So we test the devices for compliance to the LoRaWAN spec, and we use ISO 17025 accredited labs to do that testing. Um, those of you who know about ISO 17025 is uh, an industry requirement for almost any kind of lab that you can develop, and uh, it makes sure that they can do the labs in a, or do the test in a quality process and ensure that the results are the same and consistent. <clears throat> the lower WAN mark is uh, lower WAN certified mark is recognized worldwide and enables entry into new markets. So far to date, we've certified over 668 individual devices uh, for you to choose from. Um, more than 100 million end devices are already deployed globally, and that that is going up every day. Uh, making lower WAN the, the de facto low power WAN technology of choice for IoT solutions. <clears throat> so lower WAN certification is engineered to identify devices that, that misbehave or misconduct. Mm -hmm, that's weird. Automated testing is used. We've created a test tool called the lower WAN certification test tool. Uh, it's a, uh, as Donna mentioned earlier this morning, it's a uh, piece of software that resides on a uh, Windows PC and works with a lower WAN gateway of your choice. And it, it uh, simulates different testing environments without uh, having any kind of perturb perturbing of the, uh, of the end device that's being tested. So we test in the most natural environment we can. This testing is uh, directly related to the LoRaWAN standards and it ensures that your device is going to be compliant with those standards. So a lot of times, and those, those of you who have a cellular background know, um, it takes a long time sometimes to certify a device, uh, wireless devices. We've been paying very special attention to that as we've developed our program. And our program, it can be tested within one to two days, and again, not weeks or, or months. So it's very cost effective, it's very quick. We also offer a separate RF performance. You know, Laura, WAN end devices um, come in lots of different configurations. Some of them have external antennas, some of them have SMA connectors that you can connect the antenna up on a tower or however you want to go to do that. Uh, many of them, the antenna is actually embedded in the device. And so when you start looking at antennas inside the device, you really need to be sensitive to 
how those how those uh, those devices radiate in a 360 degree circle to make sure that uh, there aren't any nulls and so on that might impact their performance in the field. We don't. Uh, our certification program, as you can imagine, doesn't cover any regulatory testing. That's still something that has to be done in each of the countries that you market your device in. The Lorwan uh, certification test tool is a. Here's a quick block diagram of the device. Again, we don't. Uh, we don't have any wires connected to the device. We don't make it do anything unusual to run it through the test. We run it through tests that are commanded through uh, LCTT and the subsequent gateway so that we create an environment that's as natural as possible for testing it. Um, it t the test tool runs on a, on a local PC. Uh, we have a pre-certification mode in it, and this has been really great for our, our uh, members. Um, basically, it gives them the opportunity to test that device with the same uh, rigor and the same requirements that the lab would test it with so that when they submit their device for certification testing, they know it's gonna pass. It's also a great tool for debugging as they're doing their engineering of the device. They can run it through these tests and they can isolate different areas where maybe they've uh, uh, maybe made an error in the coding or, or it's not performing as anticipated and they can make those corrections and and test it again. Well, we get we get a lot of positive feedback from our members about this tool, and it's continually evolving as we, <clears throat> excuse me, add different uh, lower WAN capabilities. Um, we're adding those also to the test tool. The authorized test labs. We have 11 authorized test labs scattered around the world in North America, Europe, and Asia. As I mentioned before, they're all. ISO 17025 accredited. Um, we, have, we have the lowest cost for testing and certification of any of the uh, IoT uh, technologies in, in, the, in existence today, um, which makes it much easier for uh, manufacturers to get their products out to market at a, at a lowest cost. The certificate of compliance is issued by the Allure Alliance uh, we are the authority that issues the certificate, and uh, that's issued upon a, receiving a passing report. So, certification by similarity. What the heck is that? Certification by similarity kind of comes in two different flavors. The first flavor is that you have one device that you've engineered, designed, and built, and you have it certified and then you build different devices. Perhaps it's a, a different uh, uh, band class. Perhaps it uh, uh, has other characteristics that are specific to different regions of the country. What you do is you use that very first device that you have certified as what we call the parent device. So you take the parent device, which is already certified, and then you get the children certified. The children are certified with many times um, no additional testing, but sometimes with a very truncated version of, uh, of testing, which typically in this, in this scenario would be associated with, um, with the, uh, the actual RF band class. So one device, multiple versions. You can also use um, the same LoRaWAN device to have different configurations. So for example, you uh, again on the left you have that, that device certified. You take the LoRaWAN portion of that device internals and move them to another, another different product. Maybe you em embed them into a, a valve or you embed them into a water meter. You can use that original device, that parent device, to certify those um, those other devices that use the same lower WAN um, guts, if you will, uh, components. Again, one device in multiple, multiple different configurations. Another, uh, another popular one is that you, um, you certify the parent device 
and maybe you have a company that uh, that wants to sell that that device that you the blue, the blue device that you've created and certified, and uh, they want to put it on the market and also um, be able to claim that it's LoRaWAN certified. If they're members as well, they can take that device, rebrand it, and it can also be certified with uh, almost zero uh, additional testing. And as a matter of fact, in this particular example, there would be uh, zero different testing. So basically rebrand the same device. Maybe you have another company that you also sell stuff through. It, uh, it can be done that way too. Again, one device, multiple brands. So modules, this is kind of where we tie into the previous uh, presentation. A module is a functional unit that is integrated into a product without any modifications. And it may or may not be uh, include the RF section. So this certification by similarity program, we've taken and analyzed what it, what it takes to actually uh, certify devices. And then we've kind of boiled it down to its core requirements. And there's a lot of companies out there that have adopted their technologies to making modules that are inclusive of the radio portion, the uh, processing portion, and the uh, protocol portion. Uh, and with this process, they, they get these devices certified. So each of those modules could, in fact, be certified, as Murata does uh, in the previous presentation. Now, you can take those modules and embed them in anything that you want to, you want to sell uh, as a LoRaWAN um, certified device. Depending on, uh, depending on how you integrate it, uh, there, there's almost no additional testing required for this, uh, this configuration. So you would take that, uh, that module and you'd integrate it into um, a CO2 sensor or a water meter or even a temperature sensor of sorts. Again, if there's no, no change to uh, the LoRaWAN stack as you've integrated that, which there wouldn't be with the module, um, it's pretty simple. And it's a, it's a great way to get product on the market. It's a great way to get product on the market fast. So as I mentioned before, there's really two cases, uh, two, two different versions of uh, certification by similarity. That's integrating a module, as we uh, just went over, has the least regression testing. Um, RF performance testing is probably where you would uh, probably do the most testing. Uh, again, it depends on how you integrate that module. Maybe you add an internal antenna to it. Maybe you add a SMA connector, and, and the end user can screw a little uh, whip antenna on it. Um, <clears throat> that would require additional RF performance testing. but. Uh, case two or is, a, is the original one that we spoke about where the uh, OEM creates a device and then they reuse the LoRaWAN version of that device to create other devices. So again, the parent-child relationship with those devices. Uh, the minimal regression testing in those situations and again, depending on how you do the antenna or what's the antenna included with the original device, will depend on whether or not you would need RF performance testing. So to sum it up, certification by similarity uh, gives you the ability to design products and reuse the LoRaWAN certified portion of that to get devices out the door quickly with the least amount of engineering work. You can use, as a member, you can use LCTT to certify or pre-certify or pre-test your devices before you submit them for certification, saving you a lot of energy and resource in terms of troubleshooting the device uh, and making sure that it's going to be compliant before you even submit it for testing. Um, along with that, we, uh, we do require, and we, we do allow this, but we require that uh, vendors do the uh, back-off mechanism test uh, in-house and supply the lab with the test results. And the reason that we do that is this is like a 36-hour test. So uh, we, give the, we, give the, um, we give the members the ability to do that in their own engineering department. Uh, simply complete the certification questionnaire, complete the 
certification by similarity declaration, sign it, submit it to the authorized test lab for verification, and then they would uh, submit all of the necessary information to get your device certified to the Lower Alliance, at which point you would receive your Lower WAN certified certificate. That's, uh, that's our certification by similarity program. Um, I will be back here for the next 10 minutes or so. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. If you have any questions about anything having to do with our certification program, um, those, are, those are good questions too. So thank you.